What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sealy Strategics and on today's episode we're going to be going to the range and I'm going to be showing you some low ammunition handgun drills that you can do on a range so if you have a minimum amount of ammunition to use how you can get the maximum amount of training with the less amount of ammunition needed. That is today's topic. So we are here in the range today and what we're going to be working on my weapon presentation prepping the trigger and make sure i'm getting my sight picture before i take this shot i'm also going to be working on transition drills and making sure i have a good sight picture so while we're working this drill remember we're not worried about speed and we're not worried about being super fast we're just working on, on the basic fundamentals we're making sure that we have our proper sight picture we're going to work on our trigger squeeze we're going to work on our breathing and we're just gonna work on just basic fundamentals. I'm gonna try to use about no more than 200 rounds, uh, 150 rounds, and that's gonna be today's training session. Just a quick basic training session on just sight picture, trigger prep, trigger squeeze, and target transition. Let's go ahead and start. So before I begin, I'm just gonna do a couple dry fire practice runs just to make sure that I'm good, make sure that I get warmed up wearing my gun belt. I'm wearing my range belt today. So I just wanna get a couple dry fire sessions in just to make sure I warm up and I'm not going in cold and wasting rounds. What I'm doing when I'm taking the gun out of holster, I'm getting the gun out of holster, I'm making sure I have a good grip, and as soon as I see the target, I prep the trigger, and then I'll take that shot. All right, so I'm gonna go hot, and all I'm working on, like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and load the magazine. I'm gonna work on getting the gun out of the holster, prepping the trigger, and taking the shot. All right, weapon hot. Oh, almost forgot to pull my ears on. All right, ears on, weapon hot. Let's go ahead and start this drill. So one of the main things you have to understand when you're working on this drill is you're not worried about speed. Speed is not, you're not trying to rush this. What you're really focusing on is once you get the gun out of holster and you present the weapon onto target, you want to make sure that you prep the trigger. You're going to press the trigger back until you feel a wall. And as soon as you feel that wall and you got the sight picture, you're going to take the shot. And I kill the target. <laughs> we're going to be working on is target acquisition and sight acquisition getting on to the next target we're going to be working on transitioning the multiple targets so you want to make sure that when you take that shot in the first target you're moving your eyes to the second target and you're taking that shot boom if you go to another target you're moving eyes and taking the shot target transitions it seems pretty simple but there's still a skill and technique to it because what you don't want to do is you don't want to move your eyes you don't want to move the guns with your eyes because a lot of the times what happens if i'm taking that shot if you take that shot and you transition with the gun to the next target what ends up happening is you're either going to short you're either going to fall shorter to the target you're not going to get quite there to the target yet or you're going to pass the target and then you have to find yourself coming back so a lot of the times if you're not leading with your eyes and you're just like if you're tracing the gun and your eyes together what you're going to do you're going to end up passing the target then you have to come back on the target and that's going to take up time that's going to take several seconds and if you're shooting competitions if you're shooting any type of handgun competitions and stuff like that every millisecond and every second count so you don't want to get onto that target take that shot and then you pass the shot see even right there i pass it on i have to come back on it i'm gonna get back on target boom if I track it, I pass it, boom, if I track, I pass it, comes back, boom, then I take that shot. So what you want to do when you transition into the next target is, as soon as you take that first shot, you move your eyes to the second target. So I'm already looking at the second target. As soon as I take that shot, 
boom, it hits, I move my eyes to the second target, and then they just bring the gun back into the target and I take that shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a demonstration. I'm gonna trace my eyes with the muzzle, meaning I'm gonna move my eyes and the gun at the same time onto the target, and then I'm gonna take that shot, and you're gonna see how fast it is for me. I pass the target, and I have to get back on it, because no matter how much I train, no matter how much I practice, and I try to trace, if I move the gun with my eyes, I always pass the target almost 100% of the times, and I have to get back on it. So I'm gonna show you right now. Boom, I take the shot. I pass it, I have to get back on it. I'm gonna do it again. Boom. Boom. And you saw me do that little, that little rocket. I brought it back to the left, and then I passed it, and I have to bring it back to the right. So now, I'm gonna do the same thing, but instead of moving the gun with my eyes, I'm gonna move my eyes onto the target first, then I'm gonna bring the gun over to it and take the shot. Boom, take the shot. Boom. And that's how fast. As soon as I, uh, because I'm already looking at that target, all I'm waiting for is my dot to show up in the target. As soon as the dot shows up to my target, I'm gonna take the shot. Boom, take the shot. Boom, dot's on target. And that's why target transitions is very important. You have to practice because you naturally want to move your, the gun with your eyes because a lot of people are afraid to lose a dot. So if you do that, like I said, you, yeah, you, you're going to keep your eye on the dot the whole way, but you're so focused on the dot, you're going to pass the target every single time. I guarantee you, if you do this drill, whatever dot, and you just keep your eye on the dot the whole way, you're going to pass the target and you're going to see that you're wasting several seconds trying to get back on target. It's very important to know that when you transition into the next target, you move your eyes first and then you bring the dot onto your target. After destroying one of my targets, it fell down, I killed them. That's a good thing. I had to reset it up and I put the targets at different ranges. Right now I have one closer, about 10 yards, and I have one about 15 to 20 yards out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same drill and I'm gonna also work on my transition on the three targets. Damn bee keeps bugging me. The bee keeps messing up my shot. <laughs> right. So now we're gonna work on a reload drill. I'm gonna have one magazine that has one single round. I'm gonna fire that round. The side is gonna lock back. I'm gonna do a reload and then we're gonna go ahead and continue this drill. And just repeat, and I'm gonna get my repetition with handling the firearm, working that trigger, sight picture, and all the fundamentals that you need to work on. And that's why we're practicing, because you need to get that practice with that reload. Your sight is not going to be there anymore, so you have to reacquire that sight picture and take that shot. Reload drill, take two. I had to change target because my target fell, so I just transitioned to another target and took the shot. It's hanging by one thread, so I'm gonna try to knock it off and then go to the same thing.
All right, my beautiful peeps. It was a long day today. I was on the range for several hours. I shot, I only shot about 300 rounds, but I know it's not a lot that I shot today. I only shot about 300 rounds, but the reason it took so long and it took me all day is because I'm a one man film crew, so I do everything. The reason why it takes all day and why it's more draining. I do everything myself. So I have to set up the camera. I have to make sure I'm in focus. I have to make sure that everything's in focus that I want to capture and it's not all blurry and stuff like that. Then I have to get back into position. Then I have to go back and press record. Then I have to get into position. Then I have to take, pretend like I'm taking a shot. Then I have to stop and I have to go back and check the camera to make sure that everything was good and then I have to delete that and then I have to go and then I have to actually do the real drill boom 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 and then I have to stop what I'm doing and now I'm in the flow I'm already getting warmed up and now I gotta stop because now I want a different camera position because I don't just want to have the camera in the same spot because that's gonna be boring so I move it over to this side and I have to do the same thing I have to set up the camera I have to approximate where I'm gonna be standing I have to put the focus point to where I'm gonna be standing then I have to go press record then I have to take a test shot then I have to go back and recycle and I oh I have to rinse and repeat the whole process for every different camera angle that you see that I'm using I have to stop my training to set up the camera then I can continue my training so that's one of the main reasons right now I don't have a lot of range footage it's not that I don't shoot it's not that I don't train it's just when I'm training I just focus on training I don't worry about cameras I don't worry about nothing I just want to focus on my training I really need to try to find a, a cameraman I need somebody to, to do some footage for me my wife says she's gonna film and she's gonna you know next time she said I can use her and she's gonna be my camera guy my camera girl or whatever so I'm we're gonna see how it works out I'm gonna have her the next time I go live I'm gonna have her do some camera stuff and see how it looks and see if I like it and stuff like that honestly when I go to the range I'm not focused on the camera I don't care how cool I look I'm still gonna show you my mess ups I'm still gonna show you like sometimes when you flinch and you get that anticipation when I shot anticipation I still do that even though I've been shooting for years I still get that anticipation especially if I don't shoot for a while and then I start shooting again like the first couple times I'm gonna be anticipating the shots I believe I caught myself on, on camera today when I flinched in one of the shots where I thought the shot was gonna break but it didn't and you saw that flinch that shot anticipation and there's a drill I have a drill specifically for shot anticipation the next time I go to the range with my wife I'm gonna use that technique on her and I'm gonna try to film it so you guys can see that you know she's not no professional shooter or whatever she doesn't shoot all the time this is gonna the next time we shoot is gonna be her second time shooting I want to film that and I want to do that uh, shot anticipation drill to teach her to not anticipate that boom from the shot hopefully that's gonna work out but I'm gonna stop rambling on and stop going on about all this stuff thank you guys for tuning in see you guys in the next episode peace